Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for August 19th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get to get, get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, my name is Scott and I'm, a spo I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a shared note stock that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document to the uh, a link for the next meeting's most doc notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes uh, for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates and in the weeds in the document for us if you read for us to read during the meeting. Okay, so the meeting is held in five parts. First is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython, Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python and Microcontrollers newsletter. Second is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. Third is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth is Status Updates. It's an opportunity to report on what we've been up to, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing over the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. And lastly, uh, the fifth part is in the weeds. Uh, it's an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something we've identified ahead of time for two. That's too long for status updates. Um, all right, Melissa's text only. Um, and that covers how the meeting will go. With that, we'll get started to community news after I take a timestamp. Uh, the node stock after the fact has time codes so that you can skip around in the video. Um, I tend to do the top five sections on the in the YouTube notes as well. So community news is a preview or a, a, a slice of the newsletter, I'll, which I'll talk about at the end here. But first, uh, CircuitPython Day 2024 recap. The CircuitPython Day 2024 was last Friday and it was a huge success. 11 videos and shows were presented throughout the day and there was a time-limited Adafruit discount code for the day. A huge thank you to all viewers, customers, presenters, and more. And there's a link to the blog that recaps it all. Uh, if you missed any of it, there's also a YouTube playlist. Thank you, Foamy Guy, for posting it. Uh, the discount code is no longer active, though, so I, I should say that. Okay, the next item on our community news is the RP2350 hacking challenge. We discussed the security built into the new Raspberry Pi RP2350 microcontrollers last week. Raspberry Pi has teamed with Hextree.io to offer a security challenge to see if anyone can break through the layers of chip security. Uh, Hextree.io also has a, had a glitch board specifically aimed at the RP2350 at DEF CON 32. You can find out more about this $10,000 challenge at hextree.io slash rp2350. Uh, Raspberry Pi has got a link and also a GitHub. It's running until September 7th, so you only have a couple more weeks uh, to poke at that chip uh, and get the $10,000 reward. All right. Next up, this one was new to me, so I actually read, I read it earlier. It's a closer look at the Raspberry Pi's RP2350's HSTX high-speed serial transmit interface. Uh, HSTX on the new Raspberry Pi 2350 is an exciting new peripheral, providing output only. The first discussions have been about providing video, although there's been talk of NeoPixel output. Uh, oh, from Paint Your Dragon, too. Uh, CNX Software describes HSTX and its use in C and C CircuitPython alpha builds. Um, this is something I spent time on. 
Um, and I also note that I did do a deep dive on HSTX, uh, not last week, but the week before. Okay. Next up, yes, the new Raspberry Pi RP2350 can run Doom rather well. Graham Sanderson, one of the designers of the new R Raspberry Pi RP2350 microcontroller, has demonstrated running Doom on the RP2350 powered DEF CON 32 badge. The game includes sound and saves game support and runs at a smooth 50 frames a second. This is another demonstration of the power and versatility of the RP2350, which has been shown running Palm OS and emulating a Game Boy Color also on the DEF CON badge. And there's links there to that. Um, I believe Graham is actually like the main SDK side of things. Okay. More RP2350 news. This time, uh, the RISC-V.org looks at the RISC-V cores included in the RP2350 and obviously on the Pico 2 board. Um, it's open source, open core, which is great. And it's also done by somebody that's done, uh, that's at Raspberry Pi. Okay, last up for news is uh, one final thing about uh, the RP2350. Uh, just to note that Raspberry Pi has a list on their website of 32 boards powered by the RP2350 at launch. This includes many in the makerspace, including Adafruit, Pimeroni, Wiznet, Citron, Invector Labs, Solder, Par Par Solder Party, Seed Studio, and SparkFun. There's a link to the Adafruit blog and also directly to the product catalog on Raspberry Pi. And that's it for the highlights from the newsletter. Take one more time code. The Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter is a Circuit Python community run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at the URL adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit python. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including Circuit Python, Python, and MicroPython developments. If you want to contribute your own news or project, we'd love it. Uh, you can edit the next week's draft on GitHub. Um, there's a link in the notes, or and you can submit a pull request, or you can email, as Anne is saying in the chat, you can email cpnews at adafruit.com, or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. And we'll put those in the, the goodness that is the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for running that. OK, next up, we have the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the health of the broader project. Um, I will start with overall, and then we'll go through kind of the three core pieces, uh, the CircuitPython C core, the libraries in Blinka, um, before we get into like the subjective, how's everybody doing, what you're working on stuff a little bit later. So overall stats, uh, 26 pull requests merged from 17 different authors. Uh, we did double check that these are up to date. So this is the last week's worth of info um, and uh, an early hug to Foamy Guy for fixing it up. And uh, there was a crash in the run. So he, he redid it and uh, got all the notes. So thanks to Foamy Guy for doing that. Um, so we had 26 pull requests merged overall from 17 different authors, which is a good number. Um, some infrequent contributors that I don't uh, recognize from too often, uh, K-O-L-C-Z, uh, uh, Roa Code, um, E.A. Graham Jr., E.J. Morrington, WordSec, Andy Bing, Xenon FFM, Y Wang uh, 83, uh, Rasmus B are all infrequent contributors, so thanks to those folks. Uh, we had six reviewers uh, supporting all of those 17 authors. So thank you to our reviewers, uh, infrequent reviewers, Jerry as well. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, we had 11 closed issues by seven people and 14 open by 13 people. So a good number of people involved and uh, double digits uh, numbers, or numbers of issues as well, although we are at three overall. So that's uh, for all three kind of core components, uh, major components, I should say. Next up, uh, talking about the core, which is the C uh, core that runs on microcontrollers uh, for CircuitPython. We had 16 pull requests merged from 10 different authors. Um, I won't highlight new names there again. And then we had three reviewers to the core. We had 20 open pull requests, so we're comfortably under our one page goal of 25. Um, issues wise, we had eight closed issues by four people and six opened by six people. So we're net down two, which is great for a total of 732 open issues. 
we use milestones to track prioritization for Adafruit funded folks. Um, so if you are not funded by Adafruit, don't, uh, don't worry about picking something else up, even if we've marked it long term. We'd love to have more contributors and we're happy to support you through reviews and, and guidance. Um, we have two open issues on 9.2.0, which is our next stable release, but we also do have uh, 14 open issues on 9.1x, which is our cur current stable release, so we really would love to get uh, all those uh, two milestones down so that we could get 9.2.0 stabilized. Um, I suspect that most of our effort will go into getting 9.2 stable uh, because it features uh, not only RP2350 support, but also a new IDF support, or IDF update as well. Um, so that's where we are on the core, and now I will kick it over to Foamy Guy for an update on the libraries. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, which can all be found under uh, uh, can be found on GitHub, I should say, under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with a particular piece of hardware or helper libraries that let you build your project uh, at a bit of a higher level in the code and not worry about as many of the uh, minutia, uh, all the details and things. Across all of those libraries this week, we had nine pull requests merged by seven authors. Um, I, uh, I won't uh, mention all the same names again, but thanks to the folks mentioned earlier by Scott, the newer and less frequent Contributors, um, we had four reviewers to this week, and uh, again, thanks to those uh, reviewers that were mentioned before, as well as our more usual uh, suspects from week to week. Uh, of the merged pull requests this week, the oldest one was 135 days, the newest one was one day, and that leaves us with 44 open pull requests. The oldest one is a draft at 732 days, the newest one is at five days actually this week. Um, over the past seven days, we had two issues closed by two people, with six new issues opened up by five people, and that leaves us with 876 open issues, and there are 103 of those that are labeled Good First Issues, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, uh, which is where you should go if you're interested in getting involved with the CircuitPython project. Uh, in particular, when you load up that page, you're going to see a list of open PRs, uh, as well as a link near the top that will let you click over to open issues. The kind of first step that we usually point folks towards is take a look through the list of open PRs, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware to test, click through uh, into GitHub, take a look at the actual code from that PR. If you do have the hardware, go ahead and try it out. Leave a comment on GitHub letting us know how it went and uh, what you found when you looked over the code. Um, once you get comfortable with that, we can get you leveled up to leave official uh, reviews over on GitHub if that's something that you're interested in doing. Uh, and then if you'd like to get started on the actual coding side of things, you can, uh, again, on uh, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you can click over to open issues. Uh, similarly, look through that list for something that catches your eye uh, that's either particularly interesting to you or that you've got hardware for. Click through, uh, figure out what the issue is, whether it's a new uh, feature or a, a bug fix or whatever it may be, and uh, go ahead and clone that repo locally, make the changes, and submit your own PR with those changes. Uh, we have learn guides to walk you through the process of contributing with Git and GitHub. So if you haven't done that before, we can help you out there. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on uh, Discord who are more than willing to help you get started. Uh, so we want everyone to be able to contribute no matter what your prior uh, experience uh, and stuff like that is. So please, if it's something you'd like to do and you feel there's some reason why you're unable to, uh, come join us on the Discord and uh, say hi and ask for some help. We'd be happy to help you. Um, in terms of Library Pi uh, PI weekly download stats this week, we had, uh, let's see, a lot of sixes again. One, uh, let me see here, 166,667 PyPI downloads across the 331 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a uh, look at it. And the new libraries this week are RFM. Uh, thanks to Jerry for that. The uh, In the community bundle, looks like there's a new driver for the PCA 9674 and then an uh, update in the Tix library as well. That's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. OK, next up, I'm going to read for Blinka uh, since Melissa is text only. Uh, so we had one pull request merged from one author, E.J. E.G.J. Morrington, and Melissa reviewed it. 
There are four open pull requests across different uh, Blinka repos. Uh, there was one issue closed by a single person and two open by two people, so net up one for a total of 103 open issues. PyPI downloads this week, uh, 16,249, and PyWheels downloads in the last month, 16,249. The same number. What's, what are the odds that happens? And the number of supported boards is 146. That's it for the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Thank you, everybody, for working across all those things. Next up, we're going to get uh, more subjective and figure out or hear about what folks are. Oh, I was going to say status updates. Sorry, Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to say thank you to folks for the work that they've been doing within the community and uh, highlight the things so that not only do we give people props where they deserve props, but also uh, reiterating to everybody else what we value within our community. So uh, thanks, uh, let me take a time code for myself. Um, thanks to Liz and Ann uh, for organizing CircuitPython Day and everybody who participated. Next up, let's go to Dan. Okay, um, so on vacation last week. Uh, Scott, thanks, a little belated thanks for you doing all the RP2350 builds and all the work that was done in secret before the RP2350 release so that we had some uh, usable builds right away. Really appreciate that. And also, thanks for doing the update to ESP IDF version 5.3, which we'll be testing more. And then uh, thanks to everyone uh, who worked on and attended Circuit Python Day. As mentioned, thanks especially to Anne and Liz for doing all the organization prep and video work that helped it run so smoothly. OK. Thanks, Dan. All right, next up, I've gotten some notes from folks. So uh, first up from David, uh, Glauda, uh, hug to, talk to all the hosts, organizers, and participants of the CircuitPython Day. Second to myself and Toddbot for adding support for some of the RP2350 boards by Pimeroni during the deep dive. And lastly, a group hug for many people and many things since my last report here. And next up, I have notes from DJ Devon 3 who says, uh, hug to Sumnice for requesting a guide on Wi-Fi requests error handling. Thanks to Ann B for an excellent networking and CircuitPython learn guide. Hug to myself for adding support for a bunch of new RP2350 boards. I'm sure there will be more coming in the future as the RP2350 becomes more widely available. Hugs to everyone who hosted or interacted with the CircuitPython Day 2024 live stream. It was nice to scroll back through broadcast chat to see an entire day of people having a great time discussing CircuitPython. And a group hug. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, thanks. Um, first hard report, thanks to you, Scott, uh, for finding and fixing an issue uh, that created some corrupted binary files inside of the uh, couple of the libraries this week. Uh, and then echoing uh, what was mentioned a few times, thanks to everyone who participated in CircuitPython Day. There were so many great discussions, uh, projects, and insights into the past, present, and future of CircuitPython and the related projects. It really was inspiring to watch and a great reminder of how great the community is. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Next up is Jerry. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Foamy Guy for putting in a the message pack example, the RFM library. Nice to see somebody actually using the library and add, adding to it. And a group hug to everybody else. Thanks, Jerry. OK, next up, I have uh, four folks uh, with notes, so I will read those off. Uh, first up, Maker Melissa has a group hug. Next up, uh, Mikhail Pakusa says a hug to Tyeth for a second pair programming session regarding live video feed on Memento. Uh, next up, we have hugs from Paul Cutler, who says, Hug to Liz and Ann for all their work on, to organize CircuitPython Day, and a group hug to everyone who participated. It was a ton of fun. And last up, from Toddbot, uh, if I could type time codes, sorry. I don't have, I don't have labels on my keys, that's my... My excuse. Uh, hug to Liz and Ann for organizing CircuitPython Day 2024, PR Cutler for organizing our particular live stream, and everyone who participated on CircuitPython Day 2024. It was great being a part of it. Okay, so that's Hug Reports. 
Next up, we have status updates. This is a, done as a round robin as well, uh, where I will start and we'll go through the list of folks in the notes doc, um, which I should have said for Hub Reports, but that's OK. This time, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've been working on in the past week and what we plan on doing in the coming week up until the next meeting. This is a great way to collaborate with folks. So if somebody's working on something that you have background in, they, you may be able to collaborate. It's also just fun to hear about all of the different things happening in CircuitPython land. So uh, for me, I, I, last week I did a number of improvements for the RP2350. I enabled RGB matrix and USB host. Um, they were like one, one sort of hiccup and then uh, worked OK, which was is a testament to the Pico SDK team for making things just work under their SDK. Uh, fixed an audio playback bug that Toddbot found. Thank you, Toddbot. And also added the SparkFun Pro Micro. Um, thanks to the SparkFun folks for getting a USB PID right back to me, and then also to Toddbot for testing. And then I have p pending PRs for Pimeroni and seed boards. I fixed an issue with the ESP32 S3 startup and then updated everything to the IDF 5.3, which is the latest uh, ESP IDF update. I do need to investigate some bugs that Dan found in testing, so that's still kind of considered alpha. Later this week, uh, starting Wednesday, I'll be off and on because we do have family in town and I frankly don't know what the plan is. So uh, not exactly sure what I'll be doing. I should note that there will be no deep dive, and I'll add this to the notes, no deep dive next Friday for me uh, because I will be off for a long Labor Day weekend here in the US. Um, so I'll be gone next Friday and the Monday after that. And next up, let's check in with Dan. OK. I'm getting very close to the end of merging MicroPython version 1.22. Uh, I fixed some async IO problems uh, last week and over the weekend. There are some updates to the async IO library, which are right now in a branch. And I may just use that branch in the merge. Uh, or, I, or I'll need to test those changes against the 991 right now. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'll move, move on to the version 1.23 from MicroPython Merge. And then besides that, there are various PRs that I've been reviewing and testing. I've also been following up on bug reports that show up in the forums or in Discord and asking people to submit issues uh, when it looks like it would be appropriate to do so. So we have a, a bunch of new issues because of that. Sometimes these aren't real bugs, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, I'm testing Bliss's uh, updated web editor, and uh, she's working on some fixes for that. I'll probably make another 920 alpha. Uh, it's got me the first one, and so we'll have another one soon that will fix some problems. And I'm investigating some an issue on the ESP32-S3 where certain AT Tiny seesaw boards have to have their I2C clock set down to like 50 kilohertz or something. It has to do with clock stretching on older AT Tiny seesaw boards. And we may be doing something wrong in ESP32 S3 uh, because it appears to work in Arduino. So there's some difference that we need to investigate. And that's it. We're just not waiting long enough. Yeah, we've got to wait longer. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. All right, next up, I've got notes from a couple folks. So David Glada says, uh, in non by the land, in recent months, I got a new solar panel and a new electric vehicle and many power meter, power meter in plug and in electrical panel integrated things in Home Assistant to better understand energy use in our house, created a follow the sun system to charge my Tesla with the electricity excess. Due to the recent API rate limit added by Tesla, the whole landscape was in flux. So I contributed to multiple projects to use BLE to control the car until I found a stable solution that worked with my setup. And there's more notes in the notes doc if you want to know more about how that's happening. Uh, in CircuitPython land, all of my electric consumption, solar panel production, and car charging status are available in MQTT. I want to build a monitoring dashboard on a Pi portal, read for M MQTT, and draw on the screen. Maybe I can control the EVCC and the Tesla with the touchscreen, also via MQTT. With the P Pico 2 in CircuitPython Day, I got the urge to get some RP2350 hardware and went for Pimeroni. 
Now waiting for the PR to be included and the device page to appear on circuitpython.org. And that's David's update. Next up, we have an update from DJ Devin 3 who says, I wrote a playground note for the 24-7 online requests with CircuitPython, including how to deal with the dreaded uh, GAI error, credit to, to Deshipu. Suggestions and feedback are appreciated. I think that is when like domain lookups fail. I started working on a rechargeable PIR motion activated soap dispenser. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh... Last week, uh, over the weekend, I had a couple of live streams working on the Rainbow uh, Breakout game. Uh, it's coming along nicely. It's playable now, and it actually keeps track of score. Uh, I have a handful of ideas of power-ups that I'd like to add to it, uh, and I would still like to go and make uh, separate levels. Right now, there's pretty much just one level, um, but I want it to increase the number of bricks as you advance through the game. Um, perhaps after a bit more work, I'll make a version that can uh, run on a wider range of hardware and then document it in a learn guide or playground page. Uh, last week, I tracked down an issue in uh, image load library that resulted in some of the example images getting corrupted uh, due to the configuration inside of um, one of the Git files. Uh, I This week, uh, earlier today, in fact, looked into an issue that was causing uh, an exception with the reports that Adabot generates that are used for the state of CircuitPython for this meeting. I uh, submitted a PR to Adabot to fix that, as well as another one to update PyLint uh, because I couldn't run um, pre-commit on Python 3.12 without updating PyLint, so I submitted that as well. Um, I wrote the uh, Python implementations for circle and polygon, uh, as well as rectangle and polygon intersection detection last week, um, and a few uh, sort of helper function primitives that are used by them. And then um, this week, I intend to submit the uh, a PR to the core that will add math dot dist uh, function, which I opened up an issue for last week. And that's what I've got. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Next up, let's hear from Jerry. Yeah, hi. Uh, let's see. So I'm back to square one on my attempt to add an SPI bits. You'd be able to set particular bits in a register uh, for SPI uh, in the Adafruit register library. Uh, it turns out there was an old attempt to do this uh, a while ago that was uh, called Adafruit Circuit Python register SPI. And it's very similar, almost identical to what, what I was tempting, um, but uh, it was not ever implemented. And I think I'm beginning to see why. Um, but I really need to go back and get rid of this cat first um, mm -hmm. and um, get some better understanding of my Python fundamentals as well as the SPI specifics, because there's uh, some details in there that just, just don't make any sense to me at this point and aren't working the way I think they should. So I'll keep plugging away. Yeah, and, uh, yeah the scriptures are more here, I'll pull it out and do something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jerry, feel free to talk with me about it if you need uh, somebody to bounce the descriptor stuff off of. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, last up, we have notes from maker Melissa, uh, which I'll read. So Melissa says, I filmed and edited the CircuitPython Day video and also worked on bug fixes for the CircuitPython code editor, which if you haven't checked it out, folks should check it out at code.circuitpython.org or code-beta. .circuitpython.org. Uh, all right. And lastly, we have In the Weeds. In the Weeds is a chance for us to have any more longer forum discussions about topics that folks may have identified throughout the week. Um, <laughs> and I will uh, hand it over. We have one topic here from El Pekininen. Uh, and I'll let them introduce it unless they want me to. Oh, and I'm muted myself. Yep, somebody else gave them the role. I don't think they were a circuit Pythonista. Okay, I'll read it off since we we didn't get the role set beforehand, I don't think. So um, they say, after running into this issue in Discord, I figured I shouldn't be too hard. It, it, it shouldn't be too hard checking compatibility between Blinka and circuit Python stubs. After a quick Googling, I found out that there's a, indeed a tool for this already, MyPy's stub test. 
Um, and I think the original issue they're referring to is a different differences in the API between Blinka and native CircuitPython. Um, no, I didn't research any longer after finding it because I expect MyPy to have the best solution in the biggest community around it. But there might be better. I just haven't found it or in any way that are interesting alternatives. So they've opened up a PR and an issue to Blinka's repo for tracking this goal. Uh, Follow-up PRs would be open to fix the small inconsistencies, some renamed arguments, int versus float type hints, and the like. Uh, bigger ones should be perhaps discussed on Discord and issues. So some questions about uh, aligning the Blinka API with the CircuitPython API. Um, First, are the stubs actually checked in any way against what the CircuitPython's VM behaves like, or are they blindly created from doc comments? Uh, the answer to that is that they are not checked against the implementation, um, but the comments are in line with the implementation. So in the C source where, a, where, and that's usually true, I would say. So in shared bindings is where you'll get a comment in the C code that is also the Python stub. So the idea is that hopefully they're the same, but there is no automated check against the two. Okay, so that's the answer to the first question. And Alpacunian says, yeah, I meant out of sync issues. We'll trust what the stubs say then. Um, next up, for now, the test script only runs against Blink at OS agnostic. Is this good enough or does the code change much between devices. Didn't really understand the code structure from a quick look over the repo. I think that's a better question for Melissa. Um, if if this if the stubs using Blinka OS agnostic are reflective of the of the implementations across devices. And then uh, lastly, they ask, do we want 100% compatibility? Sure, functions should have the same signature. But do we also want to mimic stuff like attributes and properties being read-only or allow some freedom on certain aspects? Um, and I would be pretty strict with it. You know, Anything that could lead to uh, code that works on one but not the other, I would rather us not have. So I guess that's the, the bar I would set. Is like the goal is to have code work across the two. So, And probably more so that code that works in native circuit python should work in blinka so for example if native circuit python only does ints but blinka will work with ints or floats i think that's fine uh, because we do have this sort of like native circuit python is a subset of c python so i think it's okay to assume that that applies to blinka as well so that's that's what I think there. Any other comments from folks? Alpacunian says that's fine with him. Thanks for looking at that. I didn't even I hadn't even thought about having some automated way of testing the stubs are are the same. So thank you for looking into that. That's a cool tool. Okay. And that is it. Let me take uh, one last time code and we'll wrap up here. Thank you to everybody. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for August 19th. Um, thanks to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available from that audio on other, like, all podcast places. It will be also featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter uh, next week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. I believe next week is normal time. It's the week after that will be different. So next week will be normal time, August 26th. Uh, but the week after will be shifted due to a U.S. holiday. So just a heads up on that. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. If you want to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, uh, or and also have access to speaking in the meeting, you can ask us to add you to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. With that, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great week.